जय हिंद ऑल ऑफ यू माई सेल्फ निशु बंसल फ्रॉम सी एस सी डिपार्टमेंट वेलकम टू द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर ऑन द इमेज प्रोसेसिंग के सी एस जीरो सिक्स टू विच इज टॉट इन द बी टेक सी एस सी सिक्स एम सो टूडेट्स टॉपिक इज इंटेंसिटी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एंड स्पेशियल फिल्टरिंग बेसिकली वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन वी कैन डू द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन इन टू डोमेन्स वन इज द स्पेशल डोमेन एंड अनदर इज द ट्रांसफॉर्म डोमेन the transform domain is we convert the spatial domain to some other domain it can be like in the frequency domain so let's see what is the spatial domain uh when we talk about the spatial domain spatial domain is the image domain that is the uh as we as we know we use the images as it is and the image is divided into pixels and each pixel has a coordinate x comma y and in this particular coordinate we store a value that is f of x comma y which is nothing but the intensity value of the pixel intensity value let's recall what is intensity value basically we work mostly in the gray scale gray scale is which takes colors from black which is given the lowest intensity value that is 0 and white which is given the highest intensity value that is 255 so between black and white we have is the various shades of gray gray so these intensities can be any of these values from 0 to 255 so when we are working or we are doing the transformations on the image in this particular domain that is we are working on the intensity values of the image plane then next is the transform domain transform domain is the process the transform coefficients that is we will convert the spatial domain in some other domain such as frequency domain and we will work on the coefficients that is the frequency components so directly we are not working on the intensity value or the image itself we are working in some other plane so let's see how we in the today's lecture we will see the spatial domain process so what we have is as i have told you we have the input as the f of x comma y is the input intensity value then we are applying some transformation function capital t when we apply this transformation function it would get convert this pixel value would get converted into some other pixel value that is intensity value g of x comma y so f of x comma y if we are applying on the entire image that is on each and every pixel so it's an input image g of x comma y is the transformed image or we can say it's an output image and t it is some operation or on f defined over a neighborhood of points now let's see what is the neighborhood of the points so for say this is a particular pixel where we want to change the value or we found, want to find a new value so we will consider its neighborhood pixels here we have taken is a 3 cross 3 neighborhood of x comma y from this entire image so the value of this particular coordinate x comma y would depend upon its neighboring 3 cross 3 pixels also so these uh, basically when we talk about the spatial domain process we work on the neighborhood operations also so the new value would be dependent upon the corresponding neighbors so here is an example of the intensity transformation function here we have taken small r to be the input intensity value which we have taken along the x axis after applying the transformation some transformation function such as capital t we will get 
small s which is the output value which would be along the y axis so here first example this is of contrast stretching that is we have the lower values 0 to some higher values for say l minus 1 so smaller values they would uh, indicate the dark intensity values and the higher intensity values they would indicate the lighter values that is we are going to the whitish side so here similarly for the output image here is the output image which we are denoting using small s so here also from 0 to l minus 1 the values would go so if we divide this particular input intensity into four three regions so from this value 0 to till this point the output is almost 0 as we can see from the graph then from this intensity value till this intensity value you we can see that we have stretch the output that is it takes the values this much values the output is taking for a narrow band of input intensity values so this is called contrast stretching that is a narrow band of intensity values we have expanded their the colors the intensity values so they can expand over large set of values then beyond this we can see that after this if we see again it is taking a constant almost constant value that is white so contrast stretching is basically when we are having in the input as a narrow band of intensity values and then we are using the entire range of the intensity values in the output so at many place contrast stretching is required so that we can clearly differentiate among the various objects in the scene then we have this another example of intensity transformation in the input what we are doing is we here we there is just it is taking just two values in the output zero and some intensity value let's say uh, x so for this entire input range from this point till this point we are assigning in the output image we are assigning the value 0 then we have a transition then from this range till this range in the input intensity value we are assigning the value some x so this is a if we want to create a binary image or a black and white image of some colored image we can apply this so this is also called the threshold function that is we can decide that this particular intensity input intensity value for say we have taken as k so if the input r is less than k then output should be then output should be equal to 0 so if it is otherwise output is equal to 1 so we can de decide a threshold k what values we want to assign in the output image let's see some basic intensity transformation functions this is a very important graph and it covers all the intensity transformation functions and we will see one by one first we can let me tell you the names of the intensity transformation functions one is the identity function then second we have is the negative function then log and it's an inverse log then we have is the nth root and the nth power so we will see one by one how they are working and how we are getting the output intensity values so uh, first well, let's see the identity identity is whatever be the input value r the same will be the output s so here the if we see the slope of this line it is almost that is its its slope is its angle is 45 degree and the uh, slope is 1 that is whatever would, would be the if this is x will, r is equal to x then s is also equal to x so this is the identity function next we have is the image negative now let's see how the image negative work it's just the inverse of the identity that is 
we have an entire range in the input from 0 to l minus 1. Similarly, we have an entire range in the output from 0 to l minus 1. Let's see at this particular point, what is the output in the image? If uh, input is l upon 4, then you can see clearly that output is 3l upon 4 in the negative transformation. So, our small s is, if we uh, write a function for this, it would be equal to l minus 1, where l minus 1 is nothing but the highest intensity value. in the image minus the current input intensity value at which we want to find the output. So, uh, we will get the negative of the image. Next is the log transformation. So, the function for the log transformation R we know is the input intensity value in the input image. Small s is the output intensity value in the output image. So, this would be s is equal to c log 1 plus r, where c is nothing but in this particular case, we take c is equal to 1. This is some constant and uh, log, let us see how uh, this particular graph is working. If we see the curve of the log, this is the curve of the log. That is, you, we can see that for a very narrow range of input intensity values, we are getting a larger values for the we have expanded actually the output intensity values. So, basically log transformation where it is useful for say I have a very dark image where the intensity values for the entire image mostly consist of values which are all on the darker side. Now, to clearly differentiate among the various objects in the scene, what we can do is we can apply the log transformation and we can expand the narrow band of dark intensity values into a broader band so that they cover a large intensity values. So, we can clearly see the image and inverse log does exactly the inverse. That is for the, if you see for the whitish narrow band, the inverse log would give you a broad band of intensity values in the output image. So, they are basically used to give you a good contrast also. Uh, but nowadays, people are not using the log transformation. Basically, the televisions and the various display devices, they make use of the power law, we can say the gamma correction. How the gamma correction work? Because a log, they do not belong to a family of curves, whereas the gamma, we just need to change the value of the gamma and we get a family of curves. That is, we can put the different values of gamma and we can get the required output. If we are not able to get the good quality output in the power, we can use this particular power law or the gamma transformation in comparison to the log transformation. Let us see the uh, function for this. Small s is equal to c r to the power gamma. We are see some constant here. For our case, we have taken c to be equal to 1. So, we can put the different different gamma values and we will get the uh, desired output. Let us see an example. If gamma is equal to 1, then S would be equal to R. That is, whatever would be the input intensity values, same would be the output intensity values for S. Now, see the upper family of curves. After this, gamma equal to 1. Upper is, we have values which are less than 1 gamma is less than 1. That is 0 0.67, 0 0.40, 0 0.20, 0 0.10 0 like this. And below we have is gamma is greater than 1. So, we can get the desired output. The functionality is almost same as the log. Here also what we have is we have a narrow band of input intensity values. So, we are applying in such a way the curve for say for this gamma equal to 0 0.20. So, it would expand the output intensity values to this much values. So, uh, when we are sending the data over some channel for say the image is being sent over the televisions, their intensities are actually merged. They are to the darker side. 
then the colors expand as they are viewed over some display device so this is the benefit of the gamma and mostly all the devices before the actual picture is viewed over the in, over the display device the gamma correction is being done here is an example of the gamma transformation as we can see in the first image here the uh, this particular region where we this is actually a image of a rib cage here we can say that uh, we are not able to detect the fracture in this particular part because this part is very darkish in this particular image then we have applied different gamma values because here we are applying basically the lower gamma values less than zero value less than one values they would expand the darker images and the higher gamma values they would make the whitish image towards the darker side so here we are applying gamma less than 1 so here very less gamma value is being applied still we are not able to find the fracture over here here uh, then we have applied some mo less more gamma value here also we are able to not detect a little bit then here see here we are clearly able to detect the fracture so likewise different different values of the gamma can be applied and we can get the desired result until we are able to get the output this is another example of the gamma transformation here as we can see this is a aerial view of the city this is a whitish image because of some fog in the weather so we are not able to clearly distinguish between the various objects within the image that is the rivers and the buildings so we have made this image to the darkish side that is we have applied gamma greater than 1 so different gamma values here we have applied a very less gamma value greater than 1 gradually we kept on increasing the gamma values here we are able to get much more clarity in the image then further we went and we increase the gamma value here very clearly we are able to see that there is a river flowing and this uh, the buildings also and this playground also can be clearly seen so likewise we can improve the images depending upon whether the image is too whitish or too dark then next is the piece wise linear transformation this is very important that is first we have seen the contrast stretching earlier that we expand the range of the intensity levels in an image so that it spans the full intensity range of the medium that is being recorded or the display device then next is the intensity level slicing basically the purpose of intensity level slicing is highlighting a specific range of intensities in an image that may be of interest for say, for example i have an aerial image of a city and i just want to highlight the rivers flowing within the city so this is of my interest so for that particular case we can use the intensity level slicing that is we can highlight only those points or those objects within the image which are of interest so here is an example of intensity level highlighting here first is without background and this particular image is with background okay let's see how this particular graph is doing the work for say i just want to highlight a particular intensity range from a to b the input intensity range so for that particular range what we have done is we have assigned a constant value for say x in the output so from a to b whatever would be the intensity values in the input it would take a constant intensity value in the output now let's see from 0 to a 0 to a we are assigning a fixed intensity let's take we can assign it 0 also or some other intensity value for say we have assigned y then after this a to b also we have assigned a constant value that is y now a to b is of our interest so the entire background that is except for the region which is of our interest we have assigned it a constant value at the background it may be like we we could have assigned it the zero value 
तो दिस पर्टिकुलर कर और द इमेज इट इज बींग यूज वेयर वी वॉन्ट टू असाइन द बैकग्राउंड एज अ जीरो वैल्यू और सम कॉन्स्टेंट वैल्यू एंड वी डोंट वॉन्ट टू हाईलाइट द बैकग्राउंड वी जस्ट वॉन्ट टू हाईलाइट अ सर्टन इंटेंसिटी वैल्यूज और अ रीजन विद इन द इमेज देन नेक्स्ट इज वी वॉन्ट टू रिटेन द सेम वैल्यूज फॉर द बैकग्राउंड एंड वी वॉन्ट टू गिव द सर्टन स्पेसिफिक इंटेंसिटी वैल्यूज अ हाईलाइटिंग पॉइंट सो हेयर ए टू बी इज अवर इनपुट इंटेंसिटी वैल्यूज we have assign it a constant value x this is some region which we want to highlight so it can be like i want to highlight the rivers in the image rest of the part what we have done is we have retained the value that is here the curve is going the slope of the curve is 1 here also the slope of the curve is 1 so this would the whatever would be the input that would be the same value for the output from this side also from b to l minus 1 whatever would be the input that would go for the output also then next is a bit plane slicing this is also very important concept in the intensity transformation basically bit slicing when we talk about here we can apply it in the uh, image compression also uh, because uh, this particular uh, bit plane slicing it would reduce the size when we uh when we slice the bit by bit of the image let's take through understand through an example for example this is in my image we know the image is divided into pixels for say each pixel is made up of 8 bits let's take two two pixels and for say the values are 1 0 0 okay now these are 8 bit let's say another pixel this is pixel 1 another pixel 2 has values 0 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 okay likewise for say we have n pixels similarly for the n pixels we have values for say 0 0 1 0 1 okay so now what the bit plane slicing says is start from the low least significant bit using all the bits for each and every pixel in the lsb make a plane plane is nothing but make a image of this only the single bit then make a image of next single bit <coughs> this would be this plane likewise we will reach to the msb this last bit make a plane of this this particular plane this is another image so we will get likewise bit by bit if we are slicing we will get the eight images so the entire image which has which is made up of per pixel eight bit originally now if we divide it into one one bit for each plane now the if we see those planes this particular bit plane number 8 the most significant it gets the highest information it stores the highest information regarding the original image so instead of storing the original image which takes so many bits 8 bit if we just want to convey what is the information stored in the image we can just store the last plane still we will able to get the information regarding the image so if we merge all the planes we will get the original image so this is how it can be used to reduce the size of the image if we want from see from 8 bit per pixel we have reduced it to 1 bit per pixel so this is where the bit plane slicing is handy thank you so much